This is session one, video clip two, entitled Variances from Traditional Higher Educational or HE. And this is uh, a video clip in the series for the AEDT 1120 Foundations of Digital Teaching and Learning Technologies course from UOIT. The analysis questions for this video clip are as follows. Number one, which of the variances noted have you encountered before in educational contexts? Number two, what are the distinctions between synchronous and asynchronous technologies? Number three, according to the video, what extra component is added to learning experiences when a learning community is developed? And number four, how would you describe authentic assessment in your own words? Problem-based learning, or PBL, is a form of active learning that does not require upfront memorization of information that you will be expected to apply at some future time. According to Fog Fogarty, 1997, PBL is a curriculum model designed around real-life problems that are ill-structured, open-ended, or ambiguous, and it is suggested that PBL engages students in intriguing, real, and relevant intellectual inquiry and allows them to learn from these life experiences. PBL requires learning by doing. In a small group, you will be expected to view a video-based case study within which you will identify a problem. Once your group understands the identified problem, you will be expected to work towards creating a solution that is unique to the perspectives or roles presented by the members of your group. It is presumed that most higher education or HE courses experienced so far in your education have been fairly traditional in that they have been lecture-based with the instructor speaking about the course content which may be simultaneously displayed using some form of presentation either on a chalkboard, whiteboard, or using presentation software such as PowerPoint. The learner's role in this type of scenario is primarily passive and would include taking notes, following along with the argument as developed by the instructor, and trying to memorize the ideas as well as, enter, uh, as, well as to understand them. Assessment in this scenario is usually accomplished using some sort of testing where questions are posed in multiple choice or short form um, answer format to the learner and the learner must respond. The majority of questions posed would be of the recall type, with a few requiring working through limited problem questions, usually of a mathematical nature. While the, nature, uh, while the picture painted here may be overgeneralized, the scenario will probably be recognizable to most learners. The intent here is not to critique this teaching learning scenario, but to point out how this course deviates from the traditional format. As is indicated in the course outline in the previous video clip, each class session in this course will consist of three integrated components. Number one, a series of video clips which will constitute the lecture portion of the course. These video clips will be placed in public locations, which makes them accessible to a wider audience than those just those registered in the course. The intent of the video clip presentation is to present a situation or context within which a problem or problems can be recognized and to instigate discussion through the use of posed analysis and synthesis questions rather than to present a series of ideas that are to be understood and remembered for testing on an exam at a later date. Secondly, the synchronous group t tutorial activities are offered in order to provide a structured discussion about the situations and or context presented in the video clips. Each tutorial session will be attended by a course uh, teaching assistant. The TA will facilitate the discussion and the activities. The discussion will be structured around the analysis and synthesis questions posed in the video clips, but these are really intended to start the discussion rather than to limit it. By sharing ideas and insights into the discussion topics, you will be exposed to other perspectives and points of view, which will feed into developing new understandings of the presented situations and contexts, and problems which have been recognized. Ideas will be posted that can lead to the creation of problem solutions that can be taken further in the last integrated component. And thirdly then, the online activities will provide additional opportunities to talk with others about the problems identified in the video clips and initially discussed in the tutorial sessions. Postings in the discussion forum will allow others to know what you are thinking about and to initially identify potential group members who are interested in similar kinds of ideas and situations or contexts within which to set the PBL scenario work. 
The vast majority of currently available online programs and courses make use of asynchronous technologies, that is, online resources that are to be used to facilitate information sharing outside of the constraints of time and place among a group of people. Examples of asynchronous technologies are email, discussion forums, and the user wall on Facebook, among others. Each of these technologies allows a user to post information to a networked site so that at a later time the information can be accessed by other users um, at other locations and responses can be made. These types of technologies are worthwhile in that they allow for communication between individuals and within groups and they allow time for deeper reflection as you can take time between receiving a message and responding to it. This course will make use of asynchronous technologies for those purposes which require higher order thinking skills such as analysis, synthesis, evaluation and creation. Learning using online synchronous technologies including such things as instant messaging IM, and video conferencing VC, among others allows for synchronized, that is, same time and same virtual space communication and has the potential to support online learners in the development of learning communities. Synchronous online learning has been reported as being more social in nature than asynchronous online learning and it avoids frustration by allowing for conversations in real time. Video conferencing gives the added benefit of being able to detect and decipher facial expressions allowing for greater nuancing of the interactions. Recently, the line separating synchronous and asynchronous technologies is being blurred. Innovations such as Google Wave and the, the incorporation of real-time collaborative text editing in Google Docs puts the power of synchronous communication into what have been fairly traditional email and document writing applications, transforming them into incredibly powerful collaborative working tools. Many of the tools which can be used in this course, such as Google Docs, Twitter, IM programs such as um, MSN Messenger, etc., Skype, YouTube, Prezi, and CMAP, either are synchronous tools or they move into that space. Even Blackboard, the learning management system used in this course, has some tools that can function synchronously. For instance, the chat uh, tool. One of the intents of PBL as will be seen in future video clips, is to support the development of learner intellectual independence. This is similar to what is experienced when learning to ride a bicycle. See the Letting Go clip, letting go clip included in Blackboard. The supports are gradually removed until the bike rider is left to progress on their own. This course will start with a fair amount of support available in the tutorial and asynchronous systems, but over the five weeks or more of that um, more and more of that support will be removed until you, the learners, will be directing your own learning. The displayed graph suggests that the teacher, Professor TA, direction decreases over time. More and more of the activity and responsibility for learning will accrue to the students. This may be a very different experience for you. However, the principle is fundamental to PBL. The activities in this course expect you to develop a, a community of learners. This is based on the idea that uh, of community of practice as proposed by Etienne Wenger and Jean Levet. Um, Here is an explanation of the implications of instigation, the development of a community of learners. The quote is taken from a recent interview with Etienne. The interview can be followed, uh, found at the URL that's included on the Blackboard PDF version of this video clip. The concept, so this is the quotation, the concept has become a cornerstone for a social theory of learning. Through participation in a community of practice, you can see learning not only as the acquisition of information and skill, but also the transformation of the person, for instance, from a non-member to a member of a community. More generally, learning is a transformation of identity, and becoming a certain kind of person is what gives meaning to learning. Recently, I was talking with some researchers in medical education in Vancouver, and for them, viewing medical education as a transformation of identity was very important, going from just, I'm a regular citizen, to I'm a doctor. But they were saying that traditional medic medical education is very focused on information and skills, and there is very little talk about how students are being transformed into a person who is going to be able to give care to others. Having a theory to talk about that was very useful." Unquote.
Discussion is very often used as a tool for learning. When designed properly and used thoughtfully, discussion tasks can be an effective learning tool that promote creativity as well as generate meaningful activity and understanding for the learner. Well-designed discussion tasks lead to progressive knowledge-seeking inquiry. That's um, um, a reference to Scardamalia and Bereiter in 1994, or expansive learning, and that's a reference to Engstrom in 1999, where learners are actively synthesizing new information with prior knowledge and experiences in the process of creating not only new knowledge, but also new understandings of the learning process. And that's uh, taken from a paper by Gyo and Kong, 2003, and the reference is given on the slide. Course expectations require that all students will need to interact in a number of ways. Talking in the synchronous tutorial sessions will be necessary in order to explore the ideas introduced in the video clips. You will also need to engage in posting discussions and ideas in the asynchronous activities to come to the new understandings and build new knowledge. Authentic assessment is a form of assessment in which students are asked to perform real-world tasks that demonstrate meaningful application of essential knowledge and skills. That's a reference to John Mueller. And there's a quote from Grant Wiggins. Um, Engaging and worthy problems or questions of importance in which students must use knowledge to perform, um, to fashion performances effectively and creatively. The tasks are either replicas of or analogous to the kinds of problems faced by adult citizens and consumers or professionals in the field. That's taken from Grant, Wig Grant Wiggins, um, an article in 1993. Another quote, performance assessment calls upon the examinee to demonstrate specific skills and competencies, that is, to apply the skills and knowledge they have mastered, end quote. And that's taken from Richard Stiggins, 1987. So what does authentic assessment look like? An authentic assessment usually takes, uh, includes a task for students to perform and a rubric by which their uh, performance on the task will be evaluated. And that's taken from Mueller, 2011, Authentic Assessment Toolbox. And you can note the uh, URL in the PDF in um, Blackboard for portion of this course. Again, for this particular uh, video clip, there is no theory um, page, so we will skip right directly on to the uh, synthesis questions. So the synthesis questions for this particular video clip are as follows. Number one, why is a non-traditional format a good choice for this course? Number two, according to the video clip, why is it important for all students in this course to participate in discussion? Number three, why would authentic assessment be used for the assessment of tasks in this course? And number four, speculate on the differences between the characteristics of the learning environment described in the video and the nature of PBL. Why would this non-traditional methodology be chosen for this course? And that um, brings us to the end of the synthesis questions for this video clip, and it brings us to the end of this video clip.